Hi everyone, Mr. Morgan Lewis here at the school. In this video, we're going to talk a bit more about kicking, but uh, I'm going to gear this towards kicking with self defense. Um, obviously, without demonstrating, it's a little bit different, but I'm going to explain the principles of uh, you know, kicking and using it in self defense. Of course, um, many, many students come to us from different backgrounds and different reasons, and some people you know, start not a particularly young age or or things like that and there was a lot of people who don't consider themselves very very flexible and even with a, a period of training behind them they still find it quite hard to be you know good with the high kicks and that well I'm here to tell you that of course you don't need to be able to kick high or kick or jump spin kick high or anything like that just to be good at martial arts or taekwondo specifically okay it's not you know, it's not as strict an approach like that. It's a rather barbaric approach, in my opinion, but um, it's not necessary for you to be extremely elasticated and flexible just to be any good. You just need to know what you're doing. Now, when it comes to kicking in self-defense, if anything, you should be keeping your kicks lower. You know, you shouldn't really go much higher than the top of the knee. Um, if you go kicking above the waist, you run the risk of your leg getting grabbed and, and caught, and it can it can be a rather sticky situation. But I'm going to give you some examples of how you can use kicks um, in self-defense, and I'm going to use this pad as well. So, first of all, we've got to outline the important things. The, generally, the um, weakest areas of the legs are on the inside, and anywhere above and below the knee are generally the... Uh, the weakest areas. There are pressure points all around the legs that can be activated and triggered to get a nice reaction and to cause the balance to go and ankles to roll and things like that. But what you need to just mainly understand is that the most sensitive areas generally are the inner side of the legs. Now you can get a lot of things to work on the outside of the legs, but your technique has to be precise. Um, and plus, anyone that condition, practices conditioning, uh, such as uh, uh, Muay Thai or kickboxing in general, are uh, quite used to taking kicks to the side of the leg so it's not always the I would say that 100% go-to first time area the outside of the leg but again there are pressure points around the outside of the leg if you catch and activate correctly then regardless of conditioning it will upset the leg now uh, from here we're going to talk about the front kick first or front kick to twist kick uh, so for those who don't know what a twist kick is it's like an augmented front kick. So instead of it going straight at the target, what it does is it looks like it's going straight at it, but then it curves and goes on the inside. And this is absolutely brilliant for targeting the inside of the leg. It's very often unseen, but to, to practice it first is really important. So you have your guard, what you do is you bring your chamber up. And for the purpose of this, we're gonna, we're gonna keep this low because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about low kicks. We're not talking about doing a twist kick up here and catching around the side of the head or anything like that. We're, we're generally looking at making sure that everyone can follow, so therefore keeping the kicks low. So, we bring our chamber up, but instead of bringing it straight up here, we're gonna bring it across this leg like this. So what's gonna happen is, using the ball of the foot, but try to thrust the heel, okay, you twist out and kick the opposite direction. So imagine if you're going on the inside of the leg here, okay, where a twist kick would be most commonly used here. All right, we bring the knee across, and then what we do is we kick out and turn it like that. So it gives the illusion that it's going across this way, but it's kicking straight across here. All right, so it's chamber here, twist. At first, it's quite an uncomfortable kick to practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's not, it's not too bad. All right, so it's here, here. And of course, if you're on the other side, it's here and here. Trying to turn the foot away as much as you can, okay? And you don't have to be flexible for that at all. You just need to just rotate your leg around like this, okay? And do it slowly to start with. So, if you were looking, you know, if you, if you imagine this pad had legs, okay, I'd be targeting the inside of the legs here. So I'd be in front of my target, maybe to the side, then going through and kicking through like this. Now, if you're going to perform, if you're going to use kicks as your way out of self-defense, then your hands need to be up here so that there's little chance that the other person will register what's going on down here. So if your hands are in front of you or, or quite close to them, um, it, it, when, when the brain's focused on one thing, okay, it deregisters everything else, okay? Um, so if you, if you derive the focus from the floor up to here, then it will make your kicks much stronger, much more um, unexpected as well. 
So to perform this one, we'll be going on the inside of the leg, and then it's here and then here. Just also quickly, while I'm here, if you, when we talk about any of these kicks, do not practice them on other people unless you are trained or you're under supervision from an instructor, okay? Don't just go and do it for the sake of it, all right? So we're here, so it's up, boom, like this, okay? And then of course, if we go here, it's up, and then boom, here. Okay, so that's the twist kick. The front kick can also do the same thing, but you need to be at a slightly different angle for that. So maybe you slipped a punch, and perhaps they put the other leg forward, and then that's when you go straight into the inside of the leg. Okay? Now, the turning kick this time. Um, again, it can work the inside of the leg, but it's best suited on the outside of the leg, because when it comes inwards towards you, it's generating the most power. Now, when you're going to do a low section turning kick, um, the angle you need to be at is not necessarily in front of your target, but more at 45 degrees. Okay, we have plenty of pressure points in our legs, particularly here, the gallbladder 31, that when activated at the right angle, it makes the, the knee buckle and the leg give out. And it won't be triggered unless you hit it at that angle. So when we're going to do a turning kick, we still bring our chamber up, but we twist our hips and go in to the target like so. It's really important that you don't just stop at what you see, but you go through, okay? If you when we, when we practice, we practice it for like continuous reasons for self control, especially in sparring. Although we don't kick low in sparring, but we we when we practice kicks in general, we yeah, we tend to fall them back in as a re chamber for a number of reasons, as explained in the past. But when it comes to using it to keep you protected, then obviously you need to look beyond that. So when the kick goes in, it's here, as opposed to like that, pulling it back. Okay, it's more about go through and then it comes back. Or if you're still, you know, if you're trained by muscle memory to re-chamber, just make sure you go through and then you re-chamber and pull it back in. Okay, either way. Okay, um, when you're doing that, you, you're best off using either the shin or the instep. Um, in general, in self-defense, you're more likely to have a pair of shoes on, unless you're at the beach. But in any case, um, from here, making sure you use that area nice and strong, okay? Your instep and your shin are very, very strong, but just be a bit careful that you don't kick the knee directly, because that will hurt you more than the other person, okay? So this is why you gotta target the upper thigh, the quads here, okay? All right, lastly, the side kick. Now, that one again can be, it's quite universal. You can actually, use this one to go inside, outside, and behind as well. So inside might be, again, you might have slipped a punch and you're going on the inside of the leg like so, you know, stamping down motion, okay? Uh, if you go outside, then you're probably looking at the side of the leg here, okay? Just maybe just below the knee or on the outer aspect of the calf muscle, okay? To do the kick. But also, you could be, you know, you could have slipped past and you could be behind your target. So therefore, your side kick will go down on top of the calf, like so, and thrust downwards, okay? So you've got a number of options there, all right? So let's say there's a punch coming in from this side. I might have slipped past as I take a step, and then suddenly, whoop, it's down there. And that can be quite effective, okay? So in general, you've got some ideas there for how to use your legs. Of course, when, you, when you're doing any self-defense, it's really important not to do anything unless it's 100% necessary. Okay, you do have the right to defend yourself with reasonable force, but really it's only if absolutely needed. Okay, so if a situation's gonna kick off, okay, or something's about to happen, then obviously you wanna be on the upper hand. There is preemptive strikes, but preemptive strikes aren't always the right at the right time, okay? You have to kind of see that the other person's gonna do a strike towards you. You can't just immediately assume they're gonna hit you and then you go in first because then that puts you in the wrong, technically. So you're best off waiting for what presents itself and then responding to it, okay? But in any case, um, there's a few things you can practice with a pad, okay? Uh, or without a pad, just, just find some space. Um, if you practice this with a partner holding an air shield, just, just make sure that you're holding it properly, okay? Um, but in general, when you practice, you, you're best off practicing against one of these to, to practice your kicks, so at least then you haven't got to worry about a partner possibly getting injured, okay? Um, but to begin with, 
practice on the spot, get used to it. And remember the ultimate goal here is that you don't have to be flexible to be any good at martial arts. You just need to know how to do the technique and you just need to know how to make it work for you, okay? Ultimately. Okay, so like and share the, uh, the video, leave us a comment, let us know how you get on. It's very important for everyone to practice that, um, especially as obviously there's, there's hand techniques as well, but it might be that you've got an injury that, uh, that doesn't allow you to raise your shoulder or extend your elbow or something. So it's important to have as many tools in your toolbox as possible as such, okay? <clears throat> anyway, as I said, I can share the video, leave us a comment, and as always, look after each other and happy training.